Cowboys are officially on the clock, even though, as we can see here, the Do Cowboys have made the selection. Do I see any other position coaches? And, you know, Ika is still, I mean, they're not going to double down with defensive tackle, but Ika from Ica, Baylor is hanging around. Ika, I saw, I, I could be wrong, but it was reported that he was flagged. Can Antonio he Johnson? Flagged? That yes. makes sense why he's sliding. Antonio Johnson play special teams, six foot two, 198. Yeah, absolutely. Antonio Johnson was one of the people that I watched and immediately said he, he, man, fits, it, yes. the he fits the identity of the Cowboys. Yep. He fits the identity. He is going to be in people's faces and really make his presence known. But yeah, he, that's great value. He feels like a linebacker. He feels like a linebacker. Which is how they play their safeties now. Tracking. It is true. Pick is in for the Cowboys officially. We are here from the headquarters of the Dallas Cowboys. Whoever the pick may be, we are going to get them on the phone. We are going to have secret audio, and we are going to talk to their defensive coach, whether that's Dan Quinn possibly, whether that's the linebackers coach. I mean, we're going to talk to whoever we can to figure out why the selection was the selection that they made. Here is Drew Pearson back to the stage in Kansas City. All right, thank you. Y'all don't know, I used to be a Kansas City Chief fan growing up back in the day until <laughs> I was blessed to become a Dallas Cowboy. Yeah, right? baby. Yeah, baby. <laughs> so, as an undrafted free agent, we've known this. On behalf of my Hall of Fame teammate Jerry Jones and the Dallas Cowboys, with the 90th pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Dallas Cowboys select the Varian Overshawn. Nope. Oh, he... From Texas. DeMarvian Overshawn. Close enough, Drew Pearson, is your newest Dallas Cowboy. The Texas Longhorn will make his way to the Dallas Cowboys. And we saw John Fossil being excited. It's because he brings some special teams ability. But in the third round, that's where I had him. You guys seem like you, you didn't have them that high. I think this is a, a pick that that fits value wise. What? Why don't I? I, don't, I didn't have him this high just because he's been he he's positionless. He's he's you know somebody who was safety. Look, yes. I think the in terms of the the motor and the traits and the you want to talk about like a, a pedigree. He was a big time recruit coming to Texas. All these sorts of things. When you talk about a, a dart that you want to throw in the third round. He fits that. It's just if you're talking about wanting a a complete ready-made football player, there's going to be a learning curve here. And I don't know how they view him. They could view him as somebody who's a blitzer. They may think that he goes back to safety. I have no clue how they view Overshown. Yeah, but it makes best sense. Plays. It makes sense why Fossil would be in there because Overshown would, I imagine, be really good on special teams. Yeah. And yes, absolutely. They, they can groom him to be. A versatile piece on defense. I mean, he's a freak athlete, but some of his best plays for me was rushing. Like, I wonder if he gives you a little bit of edge rushing. Yeah, I, there, there might be a talk about kind of bulking him up a yeah. little bit and putting him at, at he edge. Can, he can bulk it up. Like, he's his got the blitz ability, he looked yeah. really good, and he can hit people. Man, he's a big hitter in the open field. He can cover and play the run. The only issue that I had was instinctively, I didn't know that he was a little late to react. Didn't always show great instincts, but... He will throw his body around, and at times it just didn't seem like he really knew where to go. He just played a little bit wild. But th there's a lot to like. If you have a plan for him, he's a very athletic football player. He needs a plan. He's had several coaches, coaching changes with Texas, and you saw, uh, like you said, there were times where he seemed unsure. Yes. I think it's because he hasn't found a home yet. Now, he did see a lot of success, like you said, rushing the passer. And the ability to do that, he is high motor, athlete, rangy. He can do it all, but he needs a home. Yeah. He needs someone to coach oh. him and to tell him this is where you're gonna be at. This is what you're gonna do. It's because that's that's been what's been wrong to me the last couple the last couple of years in his career is that he has not had um, stability on what his position is and look, what he's supposed he, to do. Here's my thing, and look, like I said. D. Overshone is a guy who is still very raw and, and still trying to find that home, like Aisha says there. Given what we've seen from the personnel department hitting on trades, guys, and what we've seen from this particular defensive staff over the last couple of years, finding the right way to use people, I'm going to believe they've got a plan for yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. I don't, I don't think this is just, we're going to take an athlete and and 
hope we can figure something out. I think they've got a plan for this guy, and I'll be really interested to see which direction they want to take him. So here's the scouting report that I have on him specifically, and it goes to what Bobby said a moment ago. But Overshone doesn't look like your normal linebacker. You'd probably expect to see him either rushing the passer or off the edge or as a big safety in the secondary, but he's kind of an in-betweener there. You've got a unique blend of length and quickness that's needed to cover in today's NFL. You missed out on a cover linebacker in Dayon Henley mm -hmm. at some point, but he's fluid in coverage, stays sticky on tight ends over the middle of the field, so maybe this is your your replacement for that. Maybe they were looking at a Dayon Henley. I don't know that for sure, but it, with a DeMarvian overshone, you bring special teams and coverage ability at the linebacker position, two things that you know Dan Quinn covets, and I'm with Bobby. I think... This is a spot where they have a plan, and you got to trust Dan Quinn. Really quickly, we do have to take a break. We'll be back with more of the 2023 NFL Draft on 105.3 The Fan and DallasCowboys.com. Back here on the DallasCowboys.com side of things. I didn't mean to cut you off, Aisha. What do you think? Oh no, you're fine. I, I he's he has pass rush ability. I'm like that's he's an athlete. I think that's what they're also really looking at with his upside and, and why they chose to take him. We, we were talking about last round, like his edge a thing, and they're like, yeah, this guy can play edge too. They think I think they think he. Can I play think edge. that's the thing. I, I think that they feel like that with his frame, they can add bulk to him, and then put him and and do some things like that with mm -hmm. the the edge rush stuff. He's. Yeah, he could. He, he's I mean, he's so long and rangy when you watch him play. So, I'm I'm kind of like I'm okay with what they're doing here. I mean, I'm you know I, I wonder if it came down to both those Texas kids. It might have. I wonder if it came. Uh, yeah. down, I wonder if it came down to the discussion of Roshan and 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 then then Overshone and you know they said. You know, then, you know, Dan Quinn kind of winning out here. You know, I think McCarthy needs to step up and start fighting for some offensive guys <laughs> I was here. about to ask. You know, this he's is now two out of three. He's now the primary play caller. I'd be like, listen, boys, we ain't, we ain't taking any more defensive guys. But, no, good for, you know, good for – he's a good player. This guy, he's, I think, right uh, – you know, maybe – I kind of had him on my board at uh, player 108, you know. D hell, Daniel Jeremiah had him at player 86 on his board. So – Kind of right in that in that spot. Maybe yeah. they could take Roshan in the fourth round or trade up and go get him. And then you have two Michigan guys and two Texas guys. Yeah. And that'll be a lot of fun. And there's plenty of running backs. I, I just I just tweeted this out. But to me, there's probably – we can talk about the, the fit for team to play. But there's probably not a better landing spot for Overshone himself. Like like if you're, you're asking about from the player's perspective, there probably wasn't a better landing spot than here. Agreed. Because yes. of what they have shown they've been able to get out of players. And when you couple what – this coaching staff has done with players before like him and you take his traits which are plus and you take a motor which i think is plus then i think that combines together to that's going to be the best possible environment to get the most out of him.